Hello there. Today we're going to be chatting about my 11 bank accounts and one bonus account, why I have them and how I use them to accomplish my financial goals. So we're going to start off with checking accounts. I recently started getting multiple checking accounts. Before that, I think I had about one at each bank and there are a few banks that allow you to have multiple checking accounts. Capital One 360 being one of them. So once I discovered <laughs> that, I definitely had to get another and we'll talk about how I use them. Now I do most of my main spending out of two accounts and those are the fixed checking account and the variable checking account. If you guys watch my budgeting videos I'm sure you've seen how I utilize that but let's start with the fixed checking account. So this checking account is mainly used for bills that are a fixed amount as in the amount doesn't change month to month. So for example car insurance, my association fees, and taxes. So right now I have the average of all those bills direct deposited from my paycheck into the account and right now that's about $548. So as the months go on the amount in the account builds up and then as needed such as every six months or every quarter whenever the bills are due they are directly taken from that account. Another thing to note is that this account just is used for bills that require a check or cash as in they cannot be paid with a credit card because as you'll see in a few I use my variable checking account to pay for those bills. The reason why I have this account is because I like to have my bill money <laughs> available. Lots of these bills are large amounts, so like thousands of dollars, and it's just nice to have that money already sitting there to pay the bill versus trying to find the money every month. So like I said before, the variable checking account has expenses or bills that are put onto my credit card. Additionally, I put money in here for my monthly living expenses, so groceries and things like that, as well as discretionary spending. So anything that I may feel that I want to buy during the month. So in terms of funding order with my paycheck, this account gets the balance of the paycheck. So all of my other accounts that have direct deposits, those are fixed amounts. And then after those fixed amounts are deposited into the account, then the remainder of the paycheck is deposited into this account. Of course, I've already done the calculations to know how much I need to live on. And I take that into account, of course, when I set up the direct deposit. So this account is nice because it allows me to, of course, put aside money for my living expenses so I never have to worry about that. And then, of course, depending on how much I get paid, if I work extra, then extra money goes into the account as well and I can use that for discretionary spending. So the next account that I have is the Lexus checking. <laughs> Basically, I have a Lexus and this account has my loan payment deposited into it and then every month it is debited because it is linked to my auto loan. So the nice thing about this account is that the account is funded with the previous month's paycheck. So I'm always a month ahead in terms of having my car loan payment available. And that is just nice for security reasons. If you've watched several of my videos, you'll know that my car payment is very high. So it's nice to have that extra month security to know that it is already set aside. Other checking accounts that I have is the one for my social media business, which is effectively at this time YouTube. So any money that I make from YouTube and my blog, that income goes into this account and it's just there so that I can separate my business income from personal income. Moving on to my travel checking account. So this account I have used up until most recently because I got another account which suits my purposes better, but this account still exists exists because it is with uh, Capital One as I've mentioned before I love their 360 checking and savings accounts. The savings account are high yield savings accounts which I'm going to talk about in the second half of this video and the checking accounts are basically zero free checking accounts. Clearly there are fees for like overdraft etc but in terms of keeping your account in place there's no minimal balance and no fee to keep it around and additionally the debit cards from Capital One have zero foreign transactions 
transaction fees, which is very handy when you're traveling. Most credit cards that are not travel credit cards will charge you a fee, so this is nice. Any amount that I put into this account can be used to make purchases when I'm overseas. Normally, this is a emergency use for the debit card because I don't normally use a debit card when I'm traveling. I usually use my travel credit cards, but it's nice to have that backup. And of course, since it's linked to my other savings accounts, I can easily pull or transfer money between accounts if I need it like in a pinch. The newest checking account that I have discovered is the, as I call it, ATM checking account. It is a Charles Schwab investor account. And this one is great because Charles Schwab provides you with a debit slash ATM card that one has no foreign transaction fees and two you get reimbursed worldwide unlimited amounts for ATM fees which comes in quite handy because if you've ever taken out cash overseas you know actually just taking out cash anywhere like the ATM fees are crazy so it's nice to get that refunded. Moving on to savings accounts so all my savings accounts are high yield savings accounts so right now the interest on those account is 4.15 percent and I think from the beginning of the point when I put it into my finances this is like one of the highest interest rates I've seen so I am quite happy about that of course it is because inflation is high and thus the feds have raised the interest rates but I plan to take advantage of it uh, until things change so first account is the home savings account and this came about I was reading an article about expenses for for home improvement based on well not home improvement but home emergencies based on where you live in the country like how much it would cost and they had like a similar state to what I live in they had a number for that and I just went with that number <laughs> so this account has four thousand eight hundred dollars which I took from my emergency fund because effectively this is an emergency fund it's just for my home so it's nice to have that and additionally because my home is quite small and the way it's set up I don't believe ever since I have lived here I've never except when I had to replace my HVAC most recently I have never had to pay thousands of dollars for any home improvement or anything in that regard so this money is also or can be used for things related to the home that I may see fit to purchase the next account is what I call my Lexus payoff account so as I mentioned in a few videos I plan to pay off my car so I got a a three-year loan for my car. I am currently in the second year. However, my plan is to pay it off in two years versus three years. So right now I am saving the amount for the last year so that I can have it sitting comfortably. And all I have to do is withdraw from the account monthly and not have to use my actual paycheck. Now, the reason I'm doing this versus paying off the account is because the interest rate, as I mentioned before, is higher than my car loan. I have a very low interest rate car loan because it was prior to the feds increasing the interest rate so I got it for a very low amount which was great so it's better to keep the amount of money set aside in the savings account versus paying off the debt so I will do that until of course the savings account interest rate drop below the cost of my actual auto loan interest rate another savings account that I have put aside or set aside for debt is my credit card payoff savings account and this account is for a credit card that I got recently the Quicksilver credit card by Capital One it has a 0% APR for a year and I did some spending on it to reach the maximum amount and when I was on vacation because Capital One does not have any international transactions fees for any of its cards so it's nice to use if you like to travel I am very much into Capital One if you haven't figured that out by now but I put some spending on that card and since it is not charging any interest I have the full amount to pay off the card just sitting in the savings account just getting paid interest effectively so I'm getting paid to keep the money there versus paying off my card of course when the card comes due in however months from now then I will pay it off before the interest accrues so one of my favorite accounts if one could have a favorite account <laughs> would be my travel savings account so so this account basically has the 
amount of money that I intend to spend for the year to travel or is effectively a sinking fund. So how this works is that every month I set aside a set amount of money to fund this account. So every month the amount builds up and then as I travel I pull money from that account to pay my credit cards. Now the reason to have lots of these types of sinking funds or the sinking funds that I have is because travel is very expensive if you've traveled anywhere recently and I do not want to get into debt to do it. I will never pay any interest on any credit card ever so I like to have the money available and set aside so I can pay for my travel like guilt-free without worry and like enjoy myself. And then the semi-final savings account that I have is my spending savings account. So this is a newer account that I came up with during my a little part-time sabbatical <laughs> but this account is the spending account which basically just has money set aside so if I want to spend beyond what my monthly budget is I can. So right now I have a set amount of money going into that account and then if I spend money beyond my normal spending I can pull from that account to pay for it and if I don't then the money just keeps on accruing over the months with interest and of course my monthly additions. So as with the travel accounts those type of spending are not necessarily frivolous. I feel like travel is a worthwhile experience and expanding you as a person and among other things but specifically for spending sometimes there are things that I want and I don't necessarily want to feel guilt around spending that money so it's good to have the money already set aside for that. So somehow I forgot to mention this but I also have a Roth IRA savings account and basically with that account I save for the next year's Roth contribution so currently I am saving for 2024's Roth contribution of 6500 and I do that because it's one less thing to worry about. If there's one thing about me I like to be somewhat prepared and I like to not be stressed <laughs> so it's helpful to have the money already set aside so that I can do just one contribution at the beginning of the year and not have to worry about it until the next year. Now in terms of the bonus account you're probably wondering or you should be wondering where my emergency fund is <laughs> because emergency funds trump all of these accounts like everyone needs to have an emergency fund but my emergency fund is in a series I bond so basically those are government treasuries that during the height of the pandemic or the after effect of the pandemic with the high inflation these accounts were paying I believe up to 9% at one point in time. Now however since inflation is going down it is at 4.3%. Once it drops below whatever the high yield savings accounts are paying then I will move it over to a high yield savings account but for now it is there in the government bonds. The thing about this account is that you have to have it for a year or more to be able to withdraw from it. So I've had it for more than a year so I can withdraw from it. The penalty is that they minus three or so months of interest from the amount that you take out which is not really a big deal if you needed it emergently. So that's why I have that account. It was really good like I said when the interest rates were high. Now that it's lower like the benefits do not outweigh the negatives. So I would definitely suggest if you're going to put your emergency fund somewhere, put it in a high yield savings account because one, the interest rates are highly comparable and two, you can quickly take your money in and out whenever you want to. So guys, that is it for all my <laughs> checking and savings accounts. Let me know if you have multiple bank accounts and what type of funds you're setting aside for each one. I'm always on the lookout or <laughs> looking for ways to find more efficient ways to handle my money so of course I'll leave them in the comments below.